Espresso, pasta, gelato, arpeggio, I love it. And although I love to talk about all four of these, I think the last one is suited best for a video on this channel. So I'm no expert in Italian, but I do believe the word arpeggio comes from arpeggiare, excuse my accent, which means playing like a harp. A loose translation would be a broken chord. And that means if you're playing chord, usually you play all notes simultaneously like this. But if we break the chord up into single notes, we get this. And in my opinion, it's the coolest thing you can play on the guitar. Not only that, you can use them in so many ways and it gives you so much understanding of the guitar and the neck. And you guessed it, it's really essential to learn them. So let's get to it, level one. Let's start off very simple and this is the most basic form of any arpeggio. We grab a chord, let's do C major seventh for now, break it down into separate notes and play them after each other. Like this. And as you heard, the C major seventh is a seventh chord. So this means there's four notes making up the chord. One, two, three. Four. And that's it really. Prego. And this sounds beautiful, but it's very limited. So let's move on to level two. The basic arpeggio is actually a wonderful platform to build on. We can freely expand the arpeggio down and up. Let's add a note below. So. And let's add a note on top. And remember, we only play notes from the C major seventh chord. So in total, it brings us to. But as much as I love One Direction, it feels a bit like a one-way street, right? So let's play the same pattern, but play it ascending, but also descending. Always do this when learning arpeggios, because you need to be able to play both up and play down. Here we go. All right, this sounds killer, but we're still very limited when playing like this. So let's go to level three. Now we really focused on that arpeggio in one octave, but why? I've never seen a harp arpeggiare in just one octave. So let's try to find the arpeggio spanning two octaves from C to C to C. And now I guess the magical sound of the arpeggio really comes to life. So we start off playing this, but now we keep on descending until we hit that low C. And let's do it again. And what an elegant arpeggio pattern this is, right? I call something elegant when you don't have to do weird things with the hand. It moves so fluently over the neck, creating that lovely sound. So now we start out low, we go all the way up and walk down again. We're already doing amazing stuff. So let's have a listen. All right, I'm not saying I'm not impressed, but I mean, Come on, there's always a but, right? Okay, level four. So far we've been playing vertically over the fretboard, which means we're playing in one position, in position seven in this case. And in many cases that is really handy, but what if you wanna expand the arpeggio even more, even further? We have to move diagonally over the neck. This way we do not limit ourselves to playing in just one position. So let's see how that works. You see? And the key to playing this pattern is to really focus on the octaves and just play the same four notes and repeat it over and over, like this. Octave one. Octave two. And then as high as we can. And this might be a bit tricky to visualize in the beginning, but it is really essential to play the arpeggio down, descending as well. Sweet, so in total, up and down, it sounds like this. Sweet, also realize that there isn't one way to fret the notes. Your preferred fingering can be different than mine, so keep that in mind. And now you might think this is the final level, the rest of this video is going to be an ad or Paul saying, I should like this video gently. Nope, although, 
Liking this video and leaving a comment is one of the nicest things you can do over here. So it really helps me out massively and it's good for karma. So it would be kind of nice, but no, no ad. We're just going to spice things up even further in level five. So instead of playing linear patterns up and down, we're going to create different patterns within the arpeggio. And we do that first by going one note down, followed by one note up, and then play the octave like this. And we do that again, the octave higher. And again. You see, and this way we create a more playful sound, more notes, so we create a longer line, which is totally awesome. So in total, it sounds like this. All right, and we can do that even further if you do the same trick twice per octave that would bring up this. All right, so now we're still playing the same four notes over and over again, but we're creating so much more notes with just the same notes, it's awesome. But something is still bugging me here. So let's go to level six. I love it when shapes or skill patterns or arpeggios come full circle, but now our shape starts at the C, hitting the two octaves, C and C, but then the highest note is that G, instead of the C. So what if you tried hitting that third octave from C to C to C, to C. That would be so awesome, right? Let's see if we can try hitting that C. You see, that works pretty well, actually. And again, it's super important that you see this bigger arpeggio, not as one huge arpeggio, but as three smaller ones. One, two, three. And then we hit the octave. Super important, beautiful. So often people are afraid of making bigger jumps on the neck or including slides, but drastically increases your reach and flexibility on the neck. So it's super important. You can easily connect different shapes that way and you really get the most out of the guitar. So we play an ascending line like this. But now we're gonna play the same line in a descending way, like this. And that descending line might be a bit tricky. So here I focus really on the root and that half step slide. It sounds pretty cool as well. You see, super cool. So in total. Right, but going down via that root still feels like there's a better option. It feels sometimes a bit strange. I mean, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Level seven. So now we find a different route on the neck that's more suited for that descending line. And remember, we're exactly playing the same notes, but just in a different position. So it suits our fingering a little bit better. So uh, ascending is this. And now we're gonna play this. So slowly it would be focusing on the octave C. C, C, and back to the one chord. So it's a really beautiful shape and it feels so much more comfortable than this shape. It's cool to know it, to have it in the back, but I mean, this feels way cooler. <laughs> you can see how naturally this plays. It feels just way, way better. Okay, okay, we're reaching pro territory here. Amazing stuff, but, and this is the biggest but you will see today. <laughs> Here's level eight. So it's a lot of fun playing one arpeggio, but it's starting to get a bit monotonous like this, right? So what can we do about it? Well, we can 
And you should, by the way, change these patterns we're playing into different chords by changing the notes inside the pattern, inside the arpeggio. For example, if you want to play a C7 perfectly for the blues, you only have to change up one note in the entire sequence. One note! We lower that major 7th, like this, the B, into a B flat. The flat 7th. 1, 3, 5, flat 7th. Of course you have to do that for every octave, but it's just that one note. The B becomes a B flat. So that becomes B flat, B flat, B flat. And down the same. You can do that for every level we played so far. So level one, if I remember correctly, was just this. This is the B, let's turn it into a B flat. Or even better. And then walk it down. And then play diagonally. <laughs> And then walk it up, the entire thing. And there we are, playing just the B flat 7 in there instead of the B, and we changed the entire chord to C 7th. Super versatile. So now to level 9, because we're still not there yet. We mix and match between different positions, giving us different chords, and let add a minor 7th chord as well. So what we're going to do is playing A minor 7th to G 7th to C major 7th, giving us three different arpeggios in three different positions going up and down the neck. So let's start with the A minor 7th. Again, four root notes, A, 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 A. Now to G, G seventh, again four. And then we conclude this thing with C major seventh. Beautiful. Just so much fun to play this. So let's try to pick up the pace a little bit. So now I also added another shape in there, and if these shapes appeal to you, I highly suggest checking out this video. One shape for all arpeggios, where I'm showing you an awesome arpeggio trick to check out that really ties in beautifully with this lesson. But first, we need to address one last level, level 10. Of course there's 10 levels. Now we should realize that these weren't actually levels at all. These were just nine different real-world appliances of arpeggio that I use all the time. One isn't better than the other, they're all awesome, and ideally for every level you should be able to play them for every chord out there, really. G major 7th, uh, A 7th, uh, B minor 7th, And I know this can be a lot, but let's keep the Italian theme going. Rome wasn't built in one day. So start off with the basic stuff and expand on it. It's the best way to learn. Anyway, downloadable tabs for all these examples are available at my Patreon page if you want to check it out more thoroughly. But other than that, I'm out and it's up to you to get playing. So again, gently touch that like button, please. If you learned something, just it really gives me a lot of motivation to keep going. Cheers. This is more like an announcement. So I've been working on an acoustic guitar course for the past few months, maybe six months maybe? It's been long. Anyway, it's called Acoustic Adventure. And today we can see a sneak peek of the course if you click the link in the description going over all the things that will be inside the acoustic course. So maybe it's for you, we're gonna check it out. It's a lot of fun. Finger picking, flat picking, strumming, chords, beautiful shapes, some theory, practical theory, mostly uh, blues, pop music, country, bluegrass, it's all there. It's gonna be awesome. Anyway, thank you so much. Have a good day and see you soon. Cheers.